In this tutorial, we're going to model and rig four robotic arms, and then we're going to attach them to the back of this animated character. And the best part about this workflow is that even if you've never tried rigging before, you could learn how to hold the power of the sun in the palm of your hand. Here we are in Blender version 3.0, and I'll try my best to explain every single step of the way, and also sometimes why we're doing what we're doing. So we'll start out by deleting everything and creating a circle. And if you look carefully in the bottom left corner, you can see this little menu where you can lower the amount of vertices all the way down to three. So now it's just a triangle instead. And we're going to duplicate this triangle on the Y axis. And let's take this duplicated version and rename it to Claw Duplicator. And we're going to use this later. So let's hide it for now. Now this triangle is going to be a segment in our robotic arm. So let's rename it F2 Robot Arm and let's say call it dot zero 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 as well, because this will make it a lot easier once we start duplicating this 40 times. So let's go to edit mode by pressing tab and let's right click subdivide. And we want to subdivide it a little bit more. So let's open this little menu and set the number of cuts to two. So now let's use this widget to view this from the top. Let's press Z and let's select these edge pieces, hold down shift, and then you can press R to rotate them. And if you select everything and press F, it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing. So we're just trying to create a shape that is going to look a little bit more interesting than just a circle. So to make these edges a little bit smoother, let's go back to object mode and let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. So the hotkey for this is control two, and this adds a subdivision surface modifier with a level of two. So now you can apply this by going right click, convert to mesh. And it's already a mesh, but this is just a faster way to apply stuff. So now when we go back to edit mode, you can see that there's a lot more geometry here. So we're going to select everything by pressing A, and then E will automatically extrude it on the Z axis. You can see in the top left corner here what the value is. So let's hold on control and set it to one meter. Okay, so this is going to be our segment. So let's view this from the front by selecting minus Y in this widget. And here is the shape that we are trying to create. It's going to look a little bit like this, and it's going to be exactly one meter tall. And this is important. Let's start out by creating a shape that is 0.5 meters tall. So press Ctrl R to loop cut and scroll two times. So you get these three loop cuts and then left click and then right click. So now we have made these three loop cuts and we want to delete everything except for these. So press Ctrl I to select inverted and then X to delete and select vertices. So now we have this shape that is 0.5 meters tall exactly, and we want to make it into this shape, because this shape is going to become all these joints stacked on top of each other. Okay, so now we're going to select all these points. And you can do that by holding down Alt, so it will do a loop select. And then you can hold down Alt and Shift to do a loop select of the bottom as well. And now let's press E to extrude, S to scale, and then press Shift Z. And this will make it extrude inwards on all axes except for the Z axis. And now let's view this from the front again and let's press E to extrude, S to scale, and then press Z. And then if you look in the top left corner now, you can see that we hold down control and we can scale it exactly by two. And this will take our height of 0.5 and multiply it by two. So now we have our shape is exactly one meter. And the reason why we really want to make sure this is exactly one meter, that is because we're going to duplicate this 40 times. So any imperfections will be much more visible. So now that we have this shape, we can add some details if you want. So hold on Alt to select this loop, press Ctrl B to bevel like this, and let's press E to extrude, let's scale it up and let's press Shift Z so it's not getting too tall. So now let's just make this little detail here. You know, if you like, you can set this to X-ray mode and in edit mode, you can box select this and scale this up a little bit if you want. So just make a shape that you think looks cool when it's going to be duplicated 40 times. That's basically what we're trying to do. How do we duplicate this? Let's view it from the front. And if you zoom far enough out, you'll see that you get this grid pattern that is a little bit brighter here and here and here and here. And this is basically, this is 10, 20, 30, 40. So we are going to make it go all the way up here. So you can duplicate this by pressing Shift D. And if you hold down Control, you can see that it will snap to this grid. So if you just move it one up on the Z axis and hold down Control all the time, it will be a perfect one meter duplication on the z-axis. And what we just did was just one action. And you can repeat that action by pressing Shift R. So if you just do this a bunch of times, you can see that we are making progress. And you can zoom out 
there's 40 meters, so you can actually just hold Shift R. Perfect. So now we have 40 copies of the robot arm segment. So to animate these segments into being an actual robotic arm that can move and bend and stuff like that, we're going to add some armature. So let's go Shift A and let's create armature. But nothing happens. That's because we can't see it. Because in here, it is an invisible bone. It's hidden. You can see it here. And to make it much easier to see this bone, you can go to Object Data Properties, make sure the bone is selected, and go to Viewport Display and set it to In Front. And now we will always see the bone, no matter how many joints are in the way. So let's extrude the bone all the way to the top. And the way to do this is you go to Edit Mode, and this top point will already be selected, so you can press G to move it. So if you press Shift C, you can see the entire robotic arm. Now let's view this from the front, and let's press G to move it, and hold down Control once again. And since we started on one meter, we can move this 39 meters, and it's going to be precisely 40 meters. And you might be thinking, well, 40 meters, that's way too big for a robotic arm. And you're right, we're going to scale this down later. But the reason why we're working with so big numbers is because this grid is much easier to work with at this scale. So now we want to make this bone into one bone for each segment. So that means we have to make this bone into 40 bones. So right click, subdivide, and when the number of cuts is set to one, we get two bones. And when the number of cuts is set to 2, we get 3 bones. So that means we have to set the number of cuts to 39 to get 40 bones. So now let's go back to object mode, and let's select all the segments by pressing A, and make sure the armature is highlighted, like this. And now you can press Ctrl P to parent all the segments to the armature. And we're not just going to do a regular parent, under armature deform, we'll set it to with automatic weights. So now we can select the armature and we can go into this new mode called pose mode and each bone can now be rotated and the segments will follow. And you might be thinking, well, that's an awful slow way to animate a robotic arm. And you're right. What if we could say to Blender, hey Blender, I want to take this bone and I want to move it over here. Can you figure out where the armature will be? Just figure it out for me. And Blender will go, okay, it should go like this. This is called inverse kinematics, and it's pretty easy to set up. So select all the bones, make sure they're pointing straight up. You can clear the rotation by pressing Alt-R. And let's select the bone in the top. Let's go to Pose, Inverse Kinematics, Add IK to Bone. And then select to New Empty Object. So what just happened is that Blender just figured out that all these bones are connected, and it made an empty object at the top. So we can go back to Object Mode, we can select this empty object, and we can press G and just move it around. And Blender just figures out where all these little objects should rotate to make it look like it's one arm. But there's a big problem with this rig. If we try and rotate this empty object, nothing happens. So select the armature and go to this new tab called Bone Constraint Properties. And here we can see the settings for the inverse kinematic constraint and you can enable rotation. So now you can select this empty object you know what, let's rename this to IK target because that's what it is. And now you can press G and you can press R to rotate. You can press R, R to rotate two times. And you have a really powerful rig. And what's so powerful about this rig is you can select the armature and you can press G and move that around as well. So now you essentially have two points where Blender will always figure out what is going to happen in between these points. And this makes it super easy for us to be animators. So what we can do with this rig, in one end we can make a claw, and in the other end we can place a human. And that is exactly what we are going to do four times. So let's start out by creating the claw. And now we're going to use that claw duplicator that we just made. So select everything and press H to hide. And in the outliner repair, let's click this little eye icon on the claw duplicator. So this object is going to be the base of our claw. So let's go to edit mode by pressing tab and let's rotate it on the X axis by minus 90 degrees. And then you can press F to fill. Let's scale it down a little bit. E to extrude. Perfect. There is our claw base. And if you like, you can clear the location. That's going to make things a little bit easier. 
Okay, so now we're going to create the claw. And this is actually quite similar to what we did in the walk cycle tutorial, so I highly recommend that you check it out. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a plane, and we're just going to go to edit mode, right click, merge vertices at center. So now we have an infinitely small point in 3D space. And we're going to extrude this by pressing E on the Y axis. And if you like, you can hold down control to make it exactly two meters. And now if you press A to select everything and move it, you can see we have an infinitely thin line. So to add thickness to this, let's go to the modifier properties, add modifier, skin. And this will make a blob. And it's actually still just these two vertices. And we can open this menu here by pressing N to access the vertex data. And if we adjust this vertex data, you can see that the skin modifier is responding. So let's lower this like this. And let's take this other end and let's lower the Y radius. And you can actually select this and move it a little bit on the Y axis as well. Let's place it in the middle there, that's good. Now let's enable X-ray by pressing Alt-Z. And now you can see that we have these two vertices, but we want to make one in the middle so we can bend it like this. Press A to select both of these vertices, right click, subdivide. And now we have this point in the middle and we are one button click away from having a rigged claw in our scene. It's this button, create armature, but right now it's disabled. That's because we have to go back to object mode and now we can click create armature and now we have a rigged claw. So let's go to pose mode and let's select one of these pieces and you can press R and X to rotate on the X axis. And let's take this one as well. Perfect. Now let's select the first bone again. Let's move it up on the Z axis. Uh, this is good. And now this is the cool part. Let's go back to object mode. Let's select this plane and actually let's rename it claw. In the modifier properties, let's collapse the skin modifier and the armature modifier and let's give it an array modifier. So this is going to give our claw more fingers. Let's set it to three. And then we're going to disable the relative offset and we're going to go down to object offset and enable that. So now you can use this little eyedropper tool and select the claw duplicator. And that's it. Now you can select the claw duplicator, you can rotate it on the Y axis, and you can hold down control and do exactly 120 degrees. And now these two fingers of this claw will copy the rotation of this main claw. So that makes this much easier to animate. So let's select the armature of the claw, let's press control tab to go to pose mode, and now you can rotate this on the X axis, and you have a rigged claw. So before we make the robotic arm visible again, let's just move this out of the way a little bit and let's press Alt H. This will reveal all the hidden items and we can select our claw, press S to scale it up. Let's move it on the Z axis. Let's make sure it lines up with the robotic arm as good as we can and perfect. Since you have the entire claw selected, you can hold down Shift and select the IK target, press Ctrl P and set parent to object. So now you can select the IK target, you can move it around, you can rotate it, and we have a fully rigged robotic arm with a claw. And now to animate the claw, instead of just pressing R and X, you're gonna have to press R and X, X. So you have to press X twice, that way it will rotate on the local axis instead. That's really cool. So now let's go ahead and find ourselves a human. And I like to use a website called Mixamo. Here you can see this guy is called Ybot, he looks like this. And then you can search for animations. Let's search for idle. And here you have all kinds of different types of animations. Really good high quality motion capture on this website. I like this one, breathing idle. You just have a little bit of back and forth movement there. I think that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and download this. So you just click download here. Okay, let's just move this stuff out of the way a little bit because it's going to be placed right here. So let's go file, import, FBX and just find your FBX file. Mine is called Breathing Idle because that's the one I picked and then import FBX. So there's our little human in our scene and if you press play you can see you have an animated mocap guy in your scene. That's pretty cool. We need to scale down this arm and we need to attach it to the back of this guy. So let's select the arm, make sure everything is selected and let's press S to scale it down. I always think it's so difficult to find the right size of this thing. I think that's good maybe, maybe a little bit smaller. Yeah, take the armature of the human. Let's actually call this armature human so we know which one it is. And then let's rename this other one to armature robot. Now let's rotate the human 180 degrees on the Z axis. Perfect. And then let's take the arm and let's press G 
to just move this and let's just attach this cyborg thing to this poor guy <laughs> and now let's by the way if you think it's difficult to select the IK target sometimes you can just right click and adjust empty display size and it gets a little bit bigger now let's rotate this around like this so to connect the armature to the human is actually surprisingly simple and it's a really elegant solution all you have to do is select the armature of the human go to post mode and if you like you can set it to x-ray now you can see all the bones and you can just take one bone press g and just move it and just see what is this bone controlling and what you want to find is the bone that controls the part you want it to be attached to so this bone is going to have a lot of animation data which you want to be transferred into this arm. And it's just such a simple solution. And this will work with any mocap rig. You just select the bone that you know have the animation data on it. And then you just go back to object mode. And now when you select the armature of your robotic arm and you hold down shift and you select the entire armature for the human, now you press control P and you can set the parent to just be the bone. And Blender will know what bone you have highlighted. So now when you press play, you can see there's a little relationship line there going into this bone that we selected. You can press play. And you can see that this rig has been connected. And this claw can still be animated in all different kinds of ways, and it's a really cool rig. So now all we have to do is to duplicate this robotic arm three times. So let's just select the human, press Ctrl I to select inverted. Let's view this from the back. So press Shift D to duplicate, and only focus on the claw. Don't matter about the tail of this thing, because that's what we're going to move. And let's Shift D again and shift the once more. So now what you can do is you can just take the armature of this robotic arm and just move it. And let's just place these that somewhere that looks good. And you can rotate these a little bit down on the x-axis maybe. You know what, these lines can be a little bit distracting, so if you want to get rid of them you can go to the overlay and you can just remove relationship lines. So now when you press play your four rigged robotic arms are connected to this motion capture data. And all these arms can still be animated freely, like this. Before you go all crazy, I have to warn you a little bit. It's a little bit unstable. Let's say I want to move this over here. Look at that. It's glitching around. You see this? Like that. And this is a little bit of a problem with this rig. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say you're a 3D animator and you're animating a leg. And you want the knee to be pointing this way all the time. You want to make sure that this doesn't look like it's going like this, right? Because that's not a way a knee works. So what's normally done is to create what's called a pole target. This is just an invisible object that just tells the rig what way should the knee be pointing. Not necessarily what way, but it's like a way to control the knee. And we could use that here as well. So let's say you have a scene that is just completely messed up and you want to try the pole target thing. Let's create an empty object. Let's call this pole target. And let's select our armature. Let's go down to Bone Constraint Properties and let's set the pole target to be this empty object. And now you can see that we can move this pole target over here and we can move this around and it's more stable, right? It's not glitching out so much because we are sort of controlling where the knee is. But here's why I'm not using it in this rig. The armature it's impossible to rotate now. We're losing the small rotations in the shoulders, for example, and we're losing all those little things that just makes this rig work. So in this rig, I have prioritized functionality over stability. And I think it makes of a more fun rig. And unfortunately, this is going to be a little bit of a buggy rig sometimes. 
If you have a solution to this, I'll be happy to read a comment about it. Please <laughs> help. <laughs> so this is a powerful rig and it should work with most mocap data. I just think it's a really fun rig to play around with. It's the next day now and I just played around with this in Eevee a little bit, did some cleanup of the geometry of the joints and added some random motion to these claws, but I just felt a little bit bad for leaving you like this. So I just wanna, for the first time on this channel, just do a part two, like a follow-up to let you know how you can make an actual video out of this project. So stay tuned for that video. <laughs> 